What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in. Let's talk about my beauty favorites for the month of July. Okay, so I have to say, I think I did a pretty decent job at shopping my stash this month, not to toot my horn, toot toot, but it's generally a constant goal of mine to go back and use some of the stuff that I really love and it just kind of gets pushed to the wayside because of new things that I get or buy. And it's it's kind of a constant struggle. And this month, July, I feel like did a pretty good job about it. So not th that's not to say there aren't some new things in here, but it's more more balanced, I feel like. So first, let's start with foundation, the Rare Beauty foundation and actually concealer, but mostly the foundation. I came back to this and man, what a beautiful formula this is. Mine is in the shade 210N and I've now shaken it up. But when I pulled it out, I could kind of see I made it almost basically halfway through this guy before I moved on to something else. So that is to me always the sign of a foundation that I know I loved. If I can't quite remember, oh, I think I like that, but maybe I abandoned it because something, you know, I just can't quite remember. You know, it's a good one when half of it's gone. The one thing I was apprehensive about when I picked this back up though, is how my skin has changed. I think, you know, this was a big one for me last summer, probably into last fall, but since then, and especially with pregnancy, my skin has dried out a ton. And luckily this is a more hydrating formula for me. It's not super moisturizing by any means, but it certainly doesn't dry my skin out. And because it's a nice, thin texture. It doesn't cake up and cling to dry patches of which I have a lot more of now on my face. So I was really pleased to not only come back to this and rediscover a formula that I love, but to find that it still works even on my changing skin. So that was really nice. Another favorite, like a continuing favorite from previous months has been my Huda Beauty Glowish Soft, Radi Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder. Mine is in the shade number two medium. It's just, it's just the perfect shade for me. It's the perfect shade. It's the perfect finish. It's like, it's not shimmery. It's not entirely matte. There's just a hint of satiny sort of finish to it to where it's very complimentary to my skin texture. And yet it doesn't make you look like a disco ball. It's just so flattering, so complimentary, and really just kind of a, a no-brainer sort of bronzer for me, which I think is why I am constantly reaching for it because it's hard to overdo. It's easy to just like, you know, swipe on super fast and it looks good every single time. Um, now some eyeshadow palettes that I came back to and I made a couple at least two, two. I made a short and then I featured one of these in another video, but I've been talking about a lot lately in July and it's because I can't get enough of them and they are such unsung heroes in the beauty community. They are the Lorac Pro palettes, uh, both the Noir and the Soleil. The Soleil is what I'm wearing today. This is basically, it's the warm toned version of this. So you get warm toned browns. This is like a terracotta or a peachy kind of brown. Pinks and warm bronzes over here in the shimmery side of things. It's the formula in these palettes is incredible. That is what I feel is most underrated about these. The mattes are buttery and smooth and pigmented, no chalking, no dragging, nothing like that. But the shimmers, oh man, they are like molten metal on your lid. Like if you're not a fan of, you know, liquid or cream eyeshadows, but you still want that same foiled sort of effect, or you're not a fan of foiling your, your powder eyeshadows, you don't have to with these. All of these shimmery and metallic shades in here, yes, you can apply them with a brush and you'll just get like a little hint, um, hint of shimmer in there, but if you apply it with a finger, oh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So the Soleil is the warm, more pink tone version, whereas the Noir, which is the palette that I've talked about more so in July, is the cool version. And this is like, to me, more of a classic smoky eye. Fewer matte shades, I will say. If you love matte shades, there are more in the Soleil palette, but the shimmery shades that are in here are, I mean, in both palettes, I feel they're very flattering and complimentary, but um, this is just a really easy go-to sort of neutral palette. It's giving me Urban Decay, Naked 2 palette vibes, which they don't make anymore. So if you, you're looking for a good cool tone palette, this is a nice one to reach for. But like next level Urban Decay Naked 2, because you have the mixture of tones and 
textures more specifically, and they just do it so well. Then I do have a newer eyeshadow palette that I picked up in July because I just couldn't help myself. Uh, and this is not new. I, I mean, it's relatively new, but I feel like I've seen this talked up a whole bunch. And it kind of wasn't until I saw it in person when I was shopping in Sephora that I was like, oh, I get what all the hype is about. It is the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette. Um, cardboard packaging. So is the Lorac, by the way, which I, some people hate cardboard packaging. I personally don't mind it. I love how sleek it is. All of these have magnetic closures, so they close firmly. Um, and I just think it's a really nice, compact way to keep your eyeshadows in place. But here we have greens, a range of warm golden greens, cool blue greens, and just... Mm, a mixture of some textures, two mattes, mostly the others are, you know, shimmer over here in the golds. I feel like you get into some flaky, glittery textures as well, but it's just nice. Green is the one color for me that is like consistently a comfort zone color. For some reason, it's, you know, browns and creams. Those are always good go-tos, but if there's one color that doesn't feel like it is really a color, if that makes sense, it's like a... I treat it like it's a neutral, a, like a flesh tone neutral. It's green for me. I can't explain it. I don't know why it's a comfort zone color, but there's just something about green and these shades in particular that I just, I look at this and I'm like, yes, that's an everyday palette for me because I, I just love it. Can't explain it. Don't know why, but it's beautiful. It's every bit as beautiful as you might've heard from anybody else here on YouTube or elsewhere. Sorry to say it. Actually, no, I'm not. Sorry, not sorry. It is what it is. Next up, kind of a surprise to me, and it might be to you if you saw the video I initially talked about this in. It's the Pixie and Louise Rowe Cream Rouge Palette Lip Blush. That is what it says on the back. And I want to point that out just because in the initial video where I talked about a bunch of new influencer collaboration items that Pixie has recently come out with, this was my least favorite one. Um, because as a lip formula, which is what I thought it was exclusively based on the description back here, Cream Rouge Palette, lip blush. I thought these were just lip shades and they are pretty enough. However, um, you ha I find that to get the kind of precision that I like with a lip product, I have to use a brush with these and it's just, it's not my preferred lip product format, but these aren't exclusively lip products. One of you guys pointed that out in the comment section of that video and lo and behold, after looking on both the Pixie website and I, you know, wherever else retails this target, they point out that it is dual use. It's lip and cheek. And I did use it on my cheeks in that video and I was very impressed with the performance and that is why after that video, I continue to use this and reach for, not just to continue testing it, but I really liked how it wore as a cheek product. And I love that I could customize and mix and match these shades in here on my cheeks. And so it went from testing to just really liking how it performed and I like reached for it every single day because it's a really pretty cream formula. I mean, there are still things that I would like to see in like, if she does another iteration of this or another collaboration with Pixie. Other things that I would love to see, like I feel like for a cheek palette, there are lots of bold reds in here and some that are very, very close to each other where we could have gotten some more like warmer orangey shades to wear on the cheeks and the lips um, and bigger pans as well. Cause it is kind of hard with the, let me see if I can find a good, blush-ish brush. Like if I'm using a brush like this, these pans are a little bit smaller compared to what I prefer to use for a, a bigger blush brush to really diffuse the product on my face. So um, maybe different some, some different colors, some bigger pans, but this is a beautiful formula for the cheeks. Again, it's not my favorite for the lips, but it'll certainly, I mean, you, you can certainly use it on your lips. It's kind of like a soft, moussey cream almost. It gives you a really soft focus sort of effect on the lips, which is what I think makes it so, so flattering on the cheeks. And again, the customization that you get from having all of these different shades in this one palette is just, it's so nice. And like I said, it took me by surprise. I mean, of all the products in that video, this is the one that really stuck with me every day after having used it in the month of July, which is why we're here, why we're talking about it here today. Next up are lips. I was really in the mood for a bright lipstick. And for some reason, this one from Lisa Eldridge popped up in my memory as one that I remember I absolutely loved and just hasn't gotten enough love because it, it's called Rainbow, it's called Rainbow Spill. Um, it's this neon, hot neon pinky, borderline coral lipstick from her. And it is just like a splash of summer on the lips. You can obviously wear it any season that you would like it to, but 
For me, it screams summer and it has been hotter than blazes here down in, well, everywhere. Like, who am I kidding? It's been hot everywhere. And for some reason, when I'm melting, I like to have bold lips. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I'm not saying it makes sense. I'm just saying it's it's what happened this month. And this is what came of it is rediscovering rainbow spill. Um, then on the more neutral side and what I'm actually wearing today is the Revlon Colorstay Satin Ink in the shade one or your go-to which is kind of what it has become. Anytime I do a bold eye, um, this has been the neutral lip that I like to wear. And it's kind of like, it's a liquid lip, but it doesn't totally dry down to be transfer proof. I mean, there's still like a little bit of a layer of product that stays mobile and, you know, slippery on the lips. So you're not gonna get a uh, liquid lip that dries down to be super uncomfortable and like cracking on it, things like that. You know, I feel like everyone's kind of over liquid lips. So this is like a hydrating liquid lip. You get the pigmentation and the intensity of a liquid lip, but not the dryness. It doesn't dry down. And as a result, it's not transfer proof, but you know, I mean, depending on where your priorities are, might not matter to you. Either way, the shade is really pretty. The formula is really nice. Hence why it has been a, a go-to for me. Last up, actually not makeup at all, it is fragrance. I have finally caved and tried Scentbird. I can't remember whose video I was watching, but they, it was like in partnership with them and they had a code and I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm just, I'm gonna do it. And I got a box <laughs> from them. And the premise is, this is like a subscription. It's a fragrance subscription box where you get these tester sized fragrances and it's delivered every month, I believe. I think the second that I made this, I wasn't sure if I'd love it, so I immediately canceled for the next month, but I do think I'm going to reactivate it, or maybe they have like a quarterly or some other sort of system that I can do because I really like it. So basically you get three different fragrances and a dispenser. Your other fragrances come in these little cardboard tubes and you get enough fragrance to where it is beyond like the bonus freebie little fragrances that you get in say your Sephora purchase that doesn't come with a sprayer. You kind of have to dab it on like your wrists or something. I always feel like they give you a decent idea of how a fragrance smells, but because it's a little bit harder to apply it to yourself, it's harder to understand how it's gonna wear on you and how it's going to interact with your body chemistry. So it's really nice to get these larger fragrances that actually have a nice spritzer on them so you can actually get like a full body application. So you get uh, the, the deluxe extra, extra large size, I guess, spritzers in these two cardboard tubes. And then one comes in this more posh looking and feeling travel dispenser that you can, you twist the top up and it comes up and down. When you pop it up, all you have to do is pull this guy out and then you can replace it with one of your other fragrances. So that, that is pretty nice. Just this whole travel system in and of itself is pretty sleek. I will, I will give them that. Um, then when you first sign up, you take a quiz and they try and match you with the kind of fragrances that they think you're going to like based on the scents and flavors and tastes that you like, whether it's sweet or savory or musky, um, your personality, like, are you playful? Are you sultry? W whatever. But the nice thing is, if you feel like your end scent profile is nothing like what you think you would typically buy, you can go back and redo it, or you can go back and hand select other fragrances, which is actually what I ended up doing, and I'm really glad I did. Um, so the three fragrances that I got were, first of all, Michael, G Michael Germain's Sugarful. They give you cards that explain all the fragrances and the notes. Michael Germain's Sugarful has Tangerine, Pink Peony, Pink Cotton Candy, musk and sandalwood. Now I thought this was going to be a hole in one for me because I love floral scents. I like a little bit of citrus and musk is like my weakness when it comes to fragrances. And pink cotton candy, I'm not a foodie fragrance. Typically there are a few exceptions to that rule, but not normally. But I thought, you know what? It has a bunch of other notes. Pink cotton candy, I'm sure will be very subtle. It is not. This is my least favorite scent of all of them. I don't think I've actually worn it more than once because it's just too sweet. Too cloyingly sweet for the way I like my fra I liked my fragrances to smell and especially on me, the way it interacts with me. It's not, it's not good. It's not what I prefer. And while it's a bummer that I got a fragrance that I don't absolutely love, again, at least I got the opportunity to thoroughly try it and like wear it and understand that I don't like it before making the mistake of 
maybe buying it or you know what I'm saying? Um, next up is Versace's Versense. This has bergamot, cedar, cardamom, fig, and musk. You can't hardly see that, and musk in it. And this is pretty good. This is probably not a fragrance that I would have picked for myself if I was smelling it at a counter, which makes it interesting to me. And I think that's why I really like it. I like fig. Musk is of course in there. I love cedar, but specifically, I suppose for like room fragrance and not for me. So I thought it'd be interesting to see what that is like in a person fragrance in a cologne or perfume. And it's really nice. It's crisp and clean, has a little bit of a fresh laundry smell going on to it, but with a little bit of fruit and earthiness from uh, the fig and the cedar and stuff. I, yeah, I really like it. It's not an everyday scent for me, but the next fragrance I'm gonna talk to you about is. The third and final fragrance that I got and my absolute favorite that I would buy a full size of and might is the Rachel Zoe Instinct. This has bergamot. It's very similar to uh, Versace Versense actually. It has bergamot, orange blossom, jasmine, lily of the valley, and musk. I think we're seeing a trend here. We got musk, we got floral, and apparently bergamot. Really love that. Um, but this, interestingly enough, for having as much floral in there as it does, I do not consider this to be a floral fragrance. It also is very light and crisp and fresh smelling. But again, that musk just kind of takes it a little bit deeper and grounds it a little bit more in something that doesn't kind of feel like it's just gonna fly away. Is that weird? I feel like those fresh, crisp fragrances, like a fresh laundry, while they're nice, they don't last. And so something that's a little bit like deeper smelling, can sm something smell deeper? Yeah, you know what I mean. Muskier, kind of like keeps it grounded and holds on. And it's, it's amazing. That is what I've been wearing every single day ever since I've gotten this. I mean, like I said, I would buy a full size. So I was su pleasantly surprised by the whole scent bird experience. I will be getting another box. I think it's a really fun way to try different fragrances, especially because, you know, I have, I love the fragrances that I have, but sometimes when you want to change things up, it's nice to be able to go somewhere and someone, you know, says they have a good enough grasp on who they think, what scent profile they think you have. And then based on those recommendations, you get just enough uh, fragrance to thoroughly test it and then some, honestly. I mean, I feel like I'm not, I'm not going to have to buy this Rachel Zoe fragrance anytime soon, despite the fact that I have been misting it multiple times every single day that I've had it this month. And so it helps you try out those new fragrances without dropping, you know, a ton of money on a full-size perfume. So yeah, they got me. I like it. I like Scentbird. I myself do not have a code. Lots of other influencers do. Um, so I highly recommend you look for that before you try because there are discounts to be had if you want to give this service a try because I think it's fun and worth it. So those are all of my favorites for this month. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'd love to hear what your favorites have been. Let me know down in the comments what you've been loving in the month of July, beauty or otherwise, food, fashion, you name it, let me know down below. Movies, if you have any good movies or shows, love to hear about those down below. Besides that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye, guys.